Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So let's continue our syndrome. So last class uh, we had seen few syndromes. So today's class is about Stevens Johnson syndrome and Papillon Leaflet syndrome. Stephen Johnson syndrome, it is also known as toxic epidermolysis necrosis or Lyell syndrome. So these two should be studied together. So let's see what is Stephen Johnson syndrome and Papillon Leaflet syndrome. So let's begin with Stevens Johnson syndrome. So we should study Stevens Johnson syndrome along with Lyell syndrome. It is also known as toxic epidermolysis necrosis because the both having same clinical presentation differs only with the severity of clinical presentation that is the skin uh, reactions. So it is a immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction so this is a hypersensitivity reaction to uh, certain drugs or certain infections and it is a severe expression of erythema multiforme and it is also known as erythema multiforme major so we should know what is erythema multiforme so erythema multiforme is basically a skin immune reaction due to a infection or medication uh, its name combined from erythema multi and forme. Erythema means uh, redness, multi is many and forme is shapes. So it describes the main symptoms which is a rash on the body. So the rash on the body where each mark resembles a bullseye form. So it is a severe form of erythema multiforme. It is also known as erythema multiforme major. So the basic etiology is infection. It could be a herpes simplex virus infection, cytomegalus virus infection. It could be due to the AIDS or Epstein-Barr virus infection. And it could be due to drug induced. So that is the main reason that is the penicillin uh, drug induced reaction is a two third of total cases of Stephens Johnson syndrome. And also it could, it could be due to phenytoin NSAIDs or uh, allopurinol. So these drugs can uh, result in this hypersensitivity reaction and also it could be an idiopathic reaction. So it is nothing but a immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction. So we know classifications of hypersensitivity 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. So there will be always a causal factor that is either infection or a drug or it could be idiopathic in nature. So it is also known as erythema multiforme major because the clinical presentation is all same because it is forming erythematous reaction on the skin surface. And the risk factors include uh, the males having more predilection compared to the female almost double because it is 2 is to 1 uh, ratio we can see. So in risk factors, uh, the second one is age. It is most commonly seen in 20 to 40 years. That is the middle aged people are more affected with this Stevens Johnson syndrome. So what are the clinical features? It is most commonly affecting uh, the surface that is skin and mucous membranes are involved. Uh, most commonly the oral, nasal, eye, GI tract, respiratory tract, urethral tract so all these surfaces are involved with this muco uh, skin and mucous membrane and also we can uh, see sore throat chills malaise and fever associated symptoms with stevens johnson syndrome so it's, it's like mucocutaneous lesions they develop abruptly and clusters of outbreaks which last from two to four weeks and the lesions are typically non pruritic and fever will be there in almost 85 percentage of the cases and involvement of oral and mucous membrane may be severe enough that patient may not be able to eat or drink and also there is conjunctivitis and patients with genitourinary involvement may complain of dysuria or an inability to void so these are the 
basic uh, clinical features and the next thing is if the basal uh, body surface area involvement is less than 10 percentage we can say that it is a minor form of toxic epidermolysis necrosis or can say that Stephen Johnson syndrome is not very much wide and the basal surface area is 10 to 30 percentage it is a combination of compilation of both Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermolysis necrosis and if the basal surface area is greater than 30 percentage it is toxic epidermolysis necrosis so that is a severe form of Stephen's Johnson syndrome so basically what happens in this is there is a death of keratinocytes so which causes separation of dermis from epidermis that is why the skin changes are seen the keratinocytes which connects the dermis and epidermis is dying off then there is a separation of dermis from epidermis and what are the complications associated with Stephen Johnson syndrome so the complication includes esophageal strictures renal failure respiratory failure and also there might be scarring and deformity of face so the esophageal strictures renal failure and respiratory failure on extensive cases and also scarring and deformity due to this uh, particular skin lesion and regarding the investigations there is no uh, laboratory studies other than biopsy exist which can aid the um, doctor in establishing the diagnosis uh, basically the skin biopsy is a definitive diagnosis because uh, we can see that bullae are sub epidermal and epidermal cell necrosis may be noted so these are the uh, pathological features and while coming to the treatment and management basically only symptomatic treatment is possible so it is mostly dealt just like how it is in the extensive burns so it is almost like an extensive burn case but the cause is little different so that's all about Stephen Johnson syndrome it is an immune complex mediated disease which is a ex extreme uh, form of erythema multiforme so etiology could be infections and drugs and idiopathic nature and it involves skin and mucous membranes of various organs like oral oral cavity nasal cavity eye uh, gastrointestinal and respiratory tract and it is associated with toxic epidermolysis necrosis if it is greater than 30 percentage and there is a death of keratinocytes that is why this is separated that's dermis and epidermis and the complications and treatment so now let's move on to the papillon leafy syndrome it is also known as palmoplantar keratoderma with periodontitis so as the name suggests it has involvement of keratinization on palms and plantar region and also it associated with severe bone destruction that is the alveolar bone so we can say that it is a disease with periodontitis and keratinization in the palms and plantar region so it is an autosomal recessive region recessive disorder so it is an immune complex hypersensitivity so when you are studying syndromes always study in two or three syndromes together so you never get confused if you are studying one syndrome at a time the high chances of you uh, mixing up the clinical features and the course with another one so always study the syndromes uh, two or three at a time that's why I'm keeping uh, the syndromes in a single board with two or three syndromes so you always keep uh, comparing the diseases and studying so it will be in your memory for a very long time so always compare and study not just one syndrome at a time so two or three syndromes take at a time and study and compare the course the clinical features the manifestations and the treatment so it will be very easy and it will be remembering for a very long time so this is a autosomal recessive uh, disorder and it is a disorder of keratinization so what happens is there is a thickening of soles and palms so severe keratinization causing thickening of soles and palms and also severe destruction of periodontal bone so severe periodontitis is there 
So why it is happening? It is due to the mutation in Cathepsin C gene. So that is a particular gene which is involved with this syndrome. So there is a mutation and causing this syndrome. So what are the clinical features? From the name itself, we know that there is keratinization in palmar and plantar region and also periodontitis. So gingiva, stomatitis, periodontitis and swollen gingiva, extreme resorption of bone and deep pockets. So these are the periodontal manifestation. So thickening of soles of palm and plantar region. So the patient has premature loss of deciduous teeth and permanent teeth. So deciduous teeth, it is uh, exfoliated completely by the age of 10 to 12 years. That is the molars, the deciduous molars replaced by premolars around 10 to 12 years. But in this case, what happens is by age of 4 to 5 years, complete tooth is lost that is deciduous tooth is completely lost by age of four to five years and if it is permanent teeth it could be completely gone by the age of 14 or 15 years that is supposed to be for a lifetime it is completely lost because of severe periodontitis that is the extreme resorption of bone and deep pockets so the teeth will be completely lost and the gingiva will back to its normal shape. So it's a very weird condition, the loss of deciduous teeth. And skin lesions will be there, white, brown, red or uh, scaly in nature. So what happens is these types of lesions undergo crustacean, cracking and deep fissuring. So the hand and foot region will undergo the crustacean, cracking and deep fissuring. And also you can see follicular keratosis, hyperhidrosis, calcification of fox cerebri and choroid plexus. So these are the another features which is seen with this syndrome that is follicular keratosis, hyperhidrosis, calcification of fox cerebri and choroid plexus. So what are the histopathological features is hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis and acanthosis. So basically we treat this disease mainly we uh, treat the periodontitis that is a infectious in nature that is scaling and root planning we can perform with antibiotics and uh, retinoids and a good oral hygiene by providing him continuous chlorhexidine mouthwash. Uh, in case of um, not savable tooth we can go for extraction and provide him a rehabilitation with uh, removable dentures or complete dentures or even with implants so that is about papillon leafy syndrome it is also known as palmo plantar keratoderma with periodontitis so it is a autosomal recessive disorder of keratinization which causing tooth loss and palmar and plantar keratinization that is papillon leafy syndrome stephen uh, stephen's johnson syndrome it's a different one it is also known as uh, toxic epidermolysis necrosis or Lyell's disease in its severe form Stephens Johnson syndrome is itself a severe expression of erythema multiforme so it starts with erythema multiforme then Stephens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermolysis necrosis the severity is increasing so that's all about uh, Stephens Johnson syndrome and papillon leafy syndrome so we have more syndromes coming up in the further sessions. So, so far we have covered uh, Frey syndrome, gorlin gott syndrome, plummer Vinson syndrome and uh, Down syndrome, Stephen Johnson's and papillon leafy syndrome. So few more syndromes are left. So I'll come up with those syndromes in my next sessions. Thank you.